Your attention, masters, mistresses, all systems functional for the Everything Geek podcast. Hey, this is Rich McDonald, and I play Commander David Mason on Call of Duty Black Ops 2. You're listening to Everything Geek podcast. Hey, it's James Arnold Taylor, the voice of Obi-Wan Kenobi and Master Pro Cool in Star Wars The Clone Wars, and you're listening to Everything Geek. The podcast. Hey, it's Leif Ganfert. I played Uncle Ben's killer in The Amazing Spider-Man, and you're listening to the Everything Geek Podcast. Hello, I'm Simon Fisherbecker. You probably know me better as Dorian Moldovar from Doctor Who, or the Fat Friar from Harry Potter. And this is Everything Geek Podcast. Face it, Tiger. You just hit the jackpot with the Everything Geek Podcast. You're listening to the Everything Geek Podcast, bringing you interviews from your favorite films and TV shows every week, and all of the latest news. Here's your host, Rory Williamson. Hello everyone, you're listening to the Everything Geek Podcast. I'm your host Rory, and joining me today is a very special guest. We have actor Mark Evericks Collett, best known for playing numerous First Order TIE Fighter pilots in Star Wars The Force Awakens. Mark, how are you today? I'm good, thank you Rory. How's it going? Very well, thanks. It's a pleasure to have you on the podcast today. Thank you. So getting right into my questions for you, Mark, can you tell us just for some background, how did you decide you wanted to become an actor and get into acting? Well, it, I've I've always loved um, films, really. So it wasn't so much becoming an actor, more just being involved in um film industry. So I actually have uh, been doing extring work for a number of years. So that's how I got into acting. Obviously, um, you know, doing a bit of amateur acting when I was younger and from time to time. But yeah, it was, it's basically being around the film industry, you know, signing up with a casting agency and just doing lots of extra work. That's very cool. It's a really great way to get into the industry, actually. Start off doing a little bit of background work, make your way up in some ways. Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of people who, you know, are, are very talented and um, yeah, looking to become proper actors. But I've always just liked, yeah, just being being on set, you know, going going to Pinewood, getting dressed up, you know, as pirates or as obviously as, uh, as TIE fighter pilots. And, uh, yeah, just enjoying that, really. Definitely. So, moving on to my second question. How were you originally cast in The Force Awakens? Were you a Star Wars fan prior to being cast in the film? I've been a Star Wars fan all, all my life. Uh, a New Hope was the first film I ever saw in the cinema. My, I'm I'm just 40 years old now, and my my dad took me to see it um, in the local cinema when I was about two years old, I think. So uh, yeah, I um, I just have always loved Star Wars. So to to uh, to actually get the opportunity to be in Star Wars was amazing. Um, how, how how I was cast? It was just my my um, my my size and measurements really because they need the the obviously i i try to i sent my photos in to try and be a rebel or someone like that but they were looking for very spe- specific looks but i also sent in my height and uh my measurements and there's a very specific size that they they wanted people to to, to play stormtroopers or tie fire pilots you know you know they built the costumes and then found people who would fit them if you see what i mean so yeah i was very lucky yeah definitely very lucky obviously like many people working on the force awakens a star wars fan for most of or in your case your whole life really and getting the look of the draw really and being the right size and measurement to play at the tie fighter pilots which is very nice yeah so they were looking for people around i think between five foot ten and six foot tall um no more than 40 inch chest and then uh i think 34 inch waist so yeah i just just got lucky i've I've actually put on a bit of weight since then unfortunately but at the time i yeah just you know it's like winning the lottery really yeah 
that's funny that you mentioned that because when you said the measurements, I was pretty much thinking to myself, I'm the right height. I'm definitely not the right waist or chest, though. So it's yeah. funny. It's funny that you brought up the weight thing because I definitely wouldn't fit in that costume. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so moving on, how would you describe the first order tie pilot costumes? Were they comfortable or uncomfortable to wear? Um. They they weren't too bad at first. They were they they just did sit, sem, they felt quite slightly heavy, but they weren't too bad. Uh, after you you were in one for about twelve hours because you know you you have long days of shooting, you know and these go it's like you know quite a few days you you know you get back on set, uh, well get back at Pinewood they put the costume on, you know after a few hours it does get heavy so like aching around the shoulder. So uh, but the the costumes were cool. Like we had when we were on set in the hangar scene, we had people coming up to us saying that they they you know they looked amazing, you know that they looked like we you know they looked because they're all in black. They look uh, better than the stormtroopers, which is another cool costume. I think they did really well on the first order course, uh, costumes. Um, the interesting thing is when when um, Gwendolyn Christie turned up in her chrome trooper, you know, as Captain Phasma. Everybody just thought that was amazing. I mean, that that was one of the best costumes I've ever seen on set. You know, she looked awesome. Um, but yeah, until then, we, we we were definitely the coolest people on set. I thought. Yeah, until Gwendolyn Christie showed up. <laughs> yeah, definitely. You must oh, she have looked awesome. Yeah, you must have been a little bit jealous that you didn't get to wear that costume. <laughs> yeah, and she's and she's tall as well. She, I think she. Uh, she must be like six three or something. She's um, she she dwarfed us as well. Yeah, and it's funny that you mention that because not too much of a height difference, but even just a few inches can make a big difference. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> yeah, but as you were saying, like the costumes in the Force Awakens definitely were amazing, from the Tie Pilot costumes to the Stormtroopers. Uh, the Flame Troopers actually caught my eye a lot as well. Um. And yeah, of course, Captain Phasma uh, with the Chrome Trooper costume. A lot of great costumes on The Force Awakens, that's for sure. Yeah, and uh, it, it was interesting when we um, turned up for fitting. There was uh, there's about four of us who who, who turned up for the fitting as um, Tie Fire pilots. So there's like seventy Stormtroopers, but there's only four. And I, at first, I thought I'd end up being a Stormtrooper. What I knew is about my about my um, height and um, size as opposed to anything to do with my looks because, you know, obviously I'm too ugly to be a rebel, which is a good thing. Uh, when I um, when we turned up, there was one of the guys who was a rugby player, a massive chest, so he wouldn't fit in. I walked into the fitting room and uh, there, were the, there was a helmet in front of us. And I went, that's a TIE fighter pilot. And all the fitters were like, no, no, you, you, you mustn't know that. You can't say that. Well, no, that's definitely a TIE fighter pilot. So, yeah, the secrecy around uh, Force Awakens was amazing. You know, no one wanted anybody to uh, to leak anything. So for, uh, for the whole time we were shooting and then for what felt like uh, it must have been about a year until the film came out. You know, you couldn't say anything to your friends or family. You couldn't post anything on social media. It was real, you know, you had to keep things really quiet. Yeah, and I think you kept it quiet even then until about April of this year. Yeah, I thought once a DVD had come out, then pretty much everybody who wanted to see Force Awakens would have had the opportunity. So at that point, I thought I could could blab. <laughs> yeah, uh, that's a nice word for it, blab. Um but yeah, it's really interesting what you were saying on their costumes as well in terms of their comfortability because on the original films, a lot of the original Stormtrooper type pilot actors, etc., you know, I remember reading interviews with a lot of them and, you know, one of the things they would talk about is how uncomfortable the costumes were back then, so it's nice that wasn't quite that bad. I mean, obviously, if you wore it for a long day, like you said, about 12 hours then, yeah, it gets a tiny bit uncomfortable, but could have been a lot worse, of course. Yeah, one, one of the things with the TIE Fire costume was that you had a zip. It was a flight suit that zipped all the way up from, like, your waist to to your neck. 
and then you put the armor on top. Whereas the stormtroopers, they had a they you know they had a fly, so if they needed to go to the loo, it wasn't too difficult. Whereas for us, we'd have to take off all our armor. So that was a bit frustrating. You'd see these stormtroopers think, "Oh, you've got it easy." But of course, uh, yeah, we 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 had to really time how much drink we'd drink so that we weren't rushing off to the loo every five minutes. Yeah, definitely. Another reason for you to be a little bit jealous, and never mind just Phasma, <laughs> you have to be jealous of the stormtroopers as well. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, obviously not really jealous. I mean, that would just be, you know, unnecessary. Uh, but if you had to pick one, and I'm sure, like with everyone, there's probably a number of memories you could choose from but if you have to choose one what is your favorite memory from your time working on the force awakens uh it definitely flying a tie fighter or at least you know being involved in the splinter group so the the day we filmed the jacku chase chase scene uh there were there there were two sets there was the um the millennium vulcan gunning gunner set you know so it was basically a, a long tube with the gunning post on the end of it. And there was the TIE fighter, the internal TIE fighter set, which was like this big sphere, which you could sit in and, um, you know, which had the, the internal gubbins of the TIE fighter. So they used the same lighting rig so that it looked the same. So you got the same sort of um, desert scene lighting when you when they, you, they shone the lights internally so you know they had daylight lights and when you went into the um the ravenger you know the super star destroyer it all went dark and they had the, the the exactly the same kind of flickering of lights where the where you go through the the super star destroyer so in the morning i got a chance to watch um john boyega directed by jj abrin um do the whole scene from the gunning uh, view and then uh, late in the afternoon I got to fly the TIE fighter so that was definitely the best bit no. yeah that's really exciting that's a great insight into such an exciting sequence from the film which of course was that chase scene you mentioned it's really cool so thank you for describing that for us yeah so I'd love to see it. Like, I'm, hopefully they'll bring out all the bits they cut eventually because you know they filmed the whole scene so um although you only see a f- like few seconds of tie fighter pilot you know that with with the, all the various helmets they they film the same scene several times so yeah uh, uh, yeah it's good definitely how would you describe the overall experience you had working with the cast and crew of The Force Awakens? Oh, it's amazing. Um, most, uh, obviously, it's like Star Wars is such a big film. I'd say there's a there's a large percentage of Star Wars fans on set, which was brilliant. You know, everybody was really keen to make this, it's, it's, you know, to put every 100% into everything they did. Um, even the people who weren't Star Wars fans knew what a huge film it was so there was this this amazing excitement you know to to be part of something so big um yeah so it was a fantastic experience that's great and i've obviously done a few other force awakens interviews as well and even with a couple of them who weren't star wars fans going into it they even said likes of ronnie bridges who played one of the first order generals um right in Hux's speed scene, he even said he wasn't a Star Wars fan going into working on the film, but then afterwards he became a big fan. So it just tells you what kind of impact working on a film like Star Wars can have on people. Yeah, there's just a sense of energy, you know, a sense of excitement. Um, and of course, like a lot of people I speak to think that the sets were CGI, uh, um, like the uh, prequels, but they weren't. They They spent a lot of um, effort to make these huge, impressive sets, like the whole hangar. There's this huge um, set in Pinewood, which was the hangar scene. Obviously, it had green screens either side. Um, but, yeah, they put... The, the, it, you, you actually felt like you were there, if you see what I mean. It, will, it didn't feel like uh, you were just standing in front of a green screen. You know, you're actually in, 
it, it, you know, the set was there. They, they had the droids running around, you know, all the, the the Death Star droids, you know, the little black boxes that run around the Death Star. They're, I don't know if you see them in the film, but they were there in the hangar. You know, loads of people with remote controls. Yeah, it's just a yeah, fantastic experience. Definitely. Now, while everyone has to be very serious on the set of a film or a TV show, there are naturally always funny moments that happen, whether it's someone messing up a line by accident during the production. Can you remember any funny moments that happened on something that you worked on that you witnessed? Uh, I almost stood on a Death Star, Death Star droid once, which was quite amusing. Uh, but the funniest thing, I think, was uh, when we went to lunch, because obviously you couldn't take these costumes off. Um, and the stormtroopers, the armor around their arms, were was so bulky that they they couldn't touch their mouths. So when they were eating, they would have to hold their forks right at the very end of the fork so they could put the food in their mouth. And when you've got 70 stormtroopers all sitting in a row eating that way, that was quite pleasing. Maybe you're not so jealous of the stormtroopers after all. <laughs> yeah, we had the last, last laugh. At least we could feed ourselves. <laughs> yeah, so it's a wonder there weren't any, like, minders or something, or people being paid to help them feed themselves. No, they I'll tell you what, there was a, a lot of security around, you know. It, we always had to, every time we left, um, the set or you know walking in open air because of the the fear of drones filming us we'd have to wear these black cloaks um the first few days uh, they they let us you know walk around on our own fighting we had the black cloaks on but then this guy came the head of security came back off holiday and he was really strict you know we couldn't go anywhere without uh, a minder which was quite interesting yeah definitely because i was interviewing um, back in July at London Film and Comic Con an actor called Pip Torrance who played one of the Imperial officers Colonel Kaplan um, and he actually told me something very similar about having to wear a cloak like you described which I thought was very interesting because I'd heard of that obviously for the main cast members before the film was released but I didn't actually know until he told me that pretty much everyone in the film uh, had to wear those cloaks so yeah really interesting very secretive as you said yeah yeah there's a is there's a procedure you know you'd get to the set and then you'd unrobe um we all carried our helmets in a in a big black bag as well and um you know, get your helmet off get your helmet out go on to set do your thing come back out robe up again put your helmet in a bag and they were quite strict they were quite wor- worried that someone would uh would you know walk off having their helmet exposed or something like that yeah a black helmet for a black bag. That's actually very clever. Like, it would just blend in. You wouldn't really know what you were looking at. Mm. Yeah. Uh, so, finally, Mark, do you have any upcoming acting roles or any other projects that you would like to talk about? No, not at the moment. Um, I've, uh, I've been uh, more... Well, I've had to do a proper job for a while. I've got a couple of young kids, you see, so... So yeah, that's uh, you know my, I I, I want to get into ex- doing extra work again, but for the time being, it's just you know a normal nine to five job. It's a bit boring. Apart from um, you know, obviously there come things like comic cons come up now and again, so that's quite good fun. Uh, obviously, I, I being a Star Wars fan, I love just chatting about Star Wars with people. So uh, yeah, that's about it really. Um, I not I'm not in the any of the future Star Wars film, Star Wars films, unfortunately, I think I've just been very lucky to what to being able to do what I've done so far. So, yeah, definitely. Well, hopefully you'll be at some more Comic Con soon because I know that you attended your first one earlier this year. Anyway, yeah, I'm down to go to Newcastle. So Newcastle Comic Con on the 19th of November. Um, so hopefully that'll be a good, good, uh, good day. I'm I'm going there on the Saturday. 
So, and also I've um, been made a honorary TIE fighter pilot with the Jolly Rogers squadron, which is part of the 501st. So that's, you know, that is literally an honor. And it's great. Those guys are just obsessed with TIE fighter, obsessed with TIE fighter pilots. So, you know, it's good. Definitely. Well, I hope you enjoy your upcoming conventions and anything else that might come your way if, in terms of extra work. If you get any soon, I'll be sure to keep an eye out for that. So that's all of my questions for you today, Mark. It's been a pleasure talking to you on the podcast. Thank you very much. It's been a pleasure to talk to you as well, Rory. You're welcome. And hopefully I can talk to you again at some point. Definitely. So I'll talk to you again soon then. Thanks again for joining us and take care. Goodbye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Check out our website, website website.everythinggeekpodcast.com slash EGP. Check out our Facebook page, www.facebook.com slash everythinggeekpodcast. Check out our YouTube channel, www.youtube.com slash user slash everythinggeekcast. Check us out on Twitter, twitter.com slash everythinggeekp. Check us out on Instagram, instagram.com slash official everythinggeekpodcast. Check out our Mixcloud profile, www.mixcloud.com slash everythinggeekpodcast. Email us at the following email, everythinggeekpodcast at gmail.com. Check out our companion podcast, Everything Geek Comic Cast, www.facebook.com slash everythinggeekcomiccast. Make sure to check out the host's YouTube channels, Mine is www.youtube.com slash user slash Separatist Destroyers. Check out Mark Everick's Collet on Twitter, twitter.com slash M Everick's Collet. And check out channel 1138 where we broadcast live from www.channel1138.com. Geeks out everyone. I'd always wanted to act, and I was always in kind of plays at school. I was at boarding school as a kid, and I'd always be volunteering for the school plays and stuff like that. And then I did a lot of acting at university, and then I went to a sort of crash course drama school for a year. In London. So, so that obviously came as a very big surprise. Um, and I think they were looking for someone with a similar body type to mine, and I think I have a background as a dancer as well, and I think that helped out. Uh,